Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hey, everybody. My guest this Monday is my good friend Michael Felker of Convictions. Convictions is a Christian metalcore band, Grizzly Award nominated, too, and has a new album dropping next month. So I decided to give Michael a call and find out more about it. Michael Felker of Convictions. How are you doing, buddy? Good, good. Trying to stay as busy as I can, and uh, I've had no problem with that. <laughs> it looks like that. I started seeing some things on your page, so I thought, hey, i got to check in with Mike. Oh, yeah, we've been keeping, keeping things moving. Tell me, how did Convictions get started? A uh, long answer for that question. <laughs> Convictions started, I want to say, between about 2010, 2011. And uh, at that point, they had another vocalist, so I, I wasn't in the band. And they had recorded an EP called I Am Nothing in 2012. And about that time is when they did their first national tour. And shortly after that, they parted ways with their uh, their past vocalist. And I got a uh, phone call shortly after. Um, from there, we hit the ground running. We recorded uh, the next EP after that called Unworthy in 2013. Uh, but I want to say the band itself has been... I want to say it was imagined like long before that because I used to work at the mall uh, at Journeys selling shoes. One of their founding members, I don't, I don't know if I can say founding, but maybe like one of the people that were in the fold, uh, his name is JD and he's from this band Sell the Sky, uh, which is a awesome Christian band from like early to mid 2000s. Mm-hmm. And he came up to me while I was working at the mall and he's like, we, we had caught up and he had been in bands and so had I. And he was like, Hey man, like, uh, you know, I've been working on this new band. I'm thinking just like straight up Christian, no fluff, no, you know, no whatever. It's just straight to the point and it's just going to be super aggressive. I think, uh, we're going to call it convictions or something. And it's funny because I remember hanging on to the, just the word convictions and that idea. And I was like, that is so cool. Like, you know, like that is just bold and awesome. Like that's such a really cool idea. And, uh, I actually use the word convictions in my lyrics for, uh, my, the band I was in before convictions. And, uh, it's just so funny how it all kind of works out. Like I, I, I remember getting a call from Zach, our drummer. And he was like, yeah, you know, like we're thinking about either keeping convictions going or maybe starting a new rebranding with, you know, maybe you in the picture. And, uh, and I was like, Oh no, like keep convictions. That's cool. <laughs> like you guys are yeah. established. I like that name. I've always liked what you're about. And, uh, at that time I was, a uh, like a born again Christian. So it was, uh, that was just kind of like perfect timing, I think. Has Zach been in the band since the beginning? Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Him and Josh. Was, okay. Founding members. Okay. How long have you been with the band now? Uh, I'd say since uh, 2013. And you are the growls, <laughs> screaming vocals, but you also have clean vocals. And I've seen you with two different clean vocalists, I believe. Yeah. So Daniel is your clean vocalist now. Yeah. So. He, uh, he joined uh, about a year ago. When we were uh, recording Hurricane, which came out around that time. And uh, before that was uh, John Fleshman, who uh, who's still really active in the band. But it's um, it's like all behind the scenes. It's funny. I was with him last night and uh, we were working on editing a video because uh, John, he had to step down from the band due to some health concerns. And him and I were just talking last night. and I was like, it's so funny. Like, you're so active in the band because you're filming and doing all this photography for us and helping us with our uh, Media, you know, it's kind of funny how that all works out. So it was not like a uh, bad blood situation. It's just simply he he couldn't continue with his health. So yeah, Daniel, yeah, he he quickly joined right after John had left. Now, how did y'all know him? him? How did you find him? Uh, with Daniel, it's kind of a funny story. He's a really a photographer. He's been filming and shooting bands and doing like professional studio work for a while. And he was shooting convictions while we were on the road years before we even knew that John would need to step down. He, uh, he was just a, a fan of the band and would shoot us anytime we crossed through Arizona. You know, when John left, we, we had someone filling in for us and it was, uh, a little bit of a gray area. We weren't sure what, you know, what our next move was going to be. And, and we had known that Daniel had done vocals and he had done some YouTube covers and uh, we weren't sure how serious he was about that or, you know, like if this was going to be a good fit. I think just because we had already established a strong connection as friends and, and uh, I guess a professional relationship in a way. And also him just being a fan of the band really, I think, helped him 
coming to the fold quickly. And it, it's really cool, actually, how he is able to contribute with the band because it's like he knows what Convictions is in the next stage where he would see us going. So it's, it's really helping us on our path. Well, personally, I think it's a perfect duo. The two of y'all are like salt and pepper. That's the goal. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we try to compliment each other, and he is so talented. He can scream, like, really good. Like, almost almost freaks me out. I'm like, I might need to watch out. <laughs> but <laughs> he can do it all. He plays guitar, he plays bass, he sings, he screams, he does video, he does photography. He's just one of those natural talents. It's awesome to yeah. witness that, really. At Loud and Proud Festival in uh, Betzdorf, Germany, I remember you guys were a little apprehensive about doing an acoustic set because that is not in your wheelhouse (laughs) no no but you guys blew that away i mean that version of hurricane i was like that needs to be recorded it's funny you mentioned that last night i was going through uh our messages and uh you and i were talking about putting together this podcast and i I think i clicked too far back and the acoustic cover came up and I, i started watching it last night and i was like wait a minute. I was like, this is pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm just shaking a tambourine, but overall, like, I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this sounds great. Like, I think, uh, I think more people should hear this. And so I, I copied a, the link to that and I sent it to Josh and uh, I was like, dude, we should post this. Like, you know, like maybe there might be some people interested in hearing maybe a recording of this or, uh, or something, you know, like in that vein, uh, an unplugged thing. And, uh, we were both like, yeah, like this would be really cool. We should try this. So, Maybe you know, there might be easy listening convictions, you know? Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> you, I guess in a way pushed us to, yeah, expand our wheelhouse and try new things. So, yeah. Uh, well, I think also the, the fact that, of course, you performed it also the way it was originally intended uh, on main stage, but I think it gives the audience a chance to hear the lyrics more and kind of mm-hmm. get a feeling for things that they may not, especially when you're talking about an audience that has a different language as their first oh, language. Yeah. So I think it was very good for them to um, experience that. It, I fell in love with it that night. Thank you. I know that we've had opportunities in the past to do like live on radio, acoustic, you know, events like that. And we, we've always turned it down because it's like, well, how are we going to practice? Who, you know, is this even going to sound good? What am I going to do? <laughs> like, There's a lot yeah. of questions that get brought up. And uh, I think just the opportunity of, you know, playing in Germany and having a... Um, it's not like you guys forced us in anything, but like, you know, there was that obligation to step out of our comfort zone and try this. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm really glad we did because maybe, you know, like I mentioned earlier, maybe we might try something like that. And I'm sure I'll do more than shake a tambourine next time. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find some way, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, tell us the message of Hurricane, because that was one of the songs uh, that was nominated for Music Video of the Year on uh, the Grizzly Awards. Tell us a little bit about the meaning behind that that concept. Yeah, the writing process for that song was pretty interesting because we had started working with our new producer, Andrew Wade. It was uh, it was a bit of a turning point for our band because John had stepped down. We had bought out of our, our record deal, so we we're completely independent. And it was just kind of one of those scary moments where we're like, what are we going to do next? You know, it's either sink or swim. You know, it, like literally, like we were on the verge of collapse or something great. And I, I mean, I think with Josh and Zach and I, like, there's no way we're going to stop. But it was a it was a bit of a uh, storm, you know, and hurricane, the, the the concept of it being, you know, around storms and uncertainty and, and fear it was definitely a cool theme to play off of. And it, it was ironic, too, because we were recording in Florida and there really was a hurricane happening while we were <laughs> tracking. And uh, it was called Hurricane Michael. It was just the weirdest coincidence. And we almost didn't get to even track that song. But um the meaning behind that song is an interview I did with uh, our friend Ray, who was filling in on bass and doing some clean vocals on a few tours for us. He uh, he was really awesome and really transparent about his story. He had lost his mother at a young age. And as a byproduct to that, he struggled not just with depression and, and meaning, but also uh, a bit of substance abuse with uh, different medications and, and things like that. And so telling his story and just having this whirlwind of a, a new direction for the band, it kind of uh, inspired us to start doing these interviews. Uh, and so like all of our, our new material now is just based off interviews that I had done with select people that we've met along the road and throughout the years. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy that we were able to do that. And uh, our producer, you know, a lot of credit to him 
pushing us to be a little more creative and, and try and branch out a bit and try new things. So yeah, hurricane is about that, uh, that change in your life, you know, looking for that different direction and, and, and how God is going to pull you out of that. And we, we kind of talk about that a bit at the end of the song being our refuge. And we pulled a little bit of scripture from that. Yeah. I hope that uh, kind of gives you a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Backstage with Mothership returns after this. Our performance service family is a Solid Rock Radio business ministry partner who offers turnkey e-commerce website design, marketing, and converged technology consulting. Online at outperformancemarketing.com. Check us out on Facebook at I'm with Mothership. Hello, this is Lee, president and founder of Solid Rock Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in. We invite you to tune in every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, to listen to Backstage with Mothership live so that way you get the full uh, show with all the music and to listen to the guest. And also, we play great music all week long. So check out our website, solidrockradio.org. We would love to have you as a regular listener. And uh, not only as a regular listener, but also check out our podcast as well for uh, Backstage with Mothership, a.k.a. Cindy Blankenship. Follow her on all her socials. Uh, on I'm with Mothership on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much for listening. Let's talk about this new album. You're getting ready to drop one pretty quickly, aren't you? Yeah, May 7th. All right. I Won't Survive? Yep. Tell us about it. Yeah. I Won't Survive is a collection of interviews that I have done, not just myself, but also like Zach and, and Josh. It's a collection of interviews that we had done throughout the past two years. Mm -hmm. Uh and uh, as I mentioned before, we we have met some pretty incredible people on tour throughout the years that have had really inspiring underdog survival stories where they were able to pull themselves out of a tragic situation and scenario. That's one big blessing of being on the road, you know, and, and I'm sure you've you've come across some particular people that have stories. You, you, you hear these stories and, you know, you ask yourself like, wow, how do they how do they get here? You know, how do they get out of that? And so me as a writer in that spot of transition, how are we going to change? What can we do? I didn't want to force a song out of myself. You know, I feel like I've written about so much in my life already that I don't want to force something or, or maybe write about something that doesn't have much weight. So, I, you know, we, we decided that we're going to start writing about other people. The concept behind I Won't Survive, Survive is being in that snapshot of these people's story where they may have been told, you know, the lie by the enemy or maybe from themselves that, like, I won't survive. I'm not going to get out of this. And I wanted to dig into that. I wanted to like hear from them what it took or what it what it was like, you know, getting out of that. Where did God come into that or did God come into that? And so we go over PTSD, uh, suicide, survivors, guilt and grief. There's cancer. It's quite a bit. And so it mm -hmm. took about two years just to get all these stories and try and write them uh, with, uh, you know, with honor and, and, you know, like to justify what they've told. I didn't want to, you know, just spit it all out. And so it took a while. And also... Mm -hmm. Being that it's DIY and that we're funding it ourselves, we had to take out loans from the bank and pull cash out anywhere we could to uh, self-fund this. So, you know, there's that. But uh, I'm, I'm really proud of it. It's truly a passion project. And, you know, we really stretched ourselves thin trying to find the resources and mm -hmm. make this happen. Can people still do the pre-orders on it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're we're hosting that all up until the release. So, yeah, there's merch bundles. There's You, know, you always have the best but, merch. I love your art. <laughs> Thank you. We uh we try and do that all ourselves as well. Occasionally we'll hire a few friends to help out, but yeah, it's a lot. It's mostly Zach, and uh, I'll I'll throw in ideas here and there. Um, but the uh, I think our niche is trying to create images and cool artwork that revolve around the lyrics because that's the focus of you know what our art is. I would say the theme I see running through most of your music is spiritual, but also mental health, mental health awareness. A lot of things that people are struggling with right now, depression and things like that, I think uh, that seems to be a ongoing theme throughout the conviction story. Yeah, it was kind of a it was kind of an accident. You know, like throughout our early years, it was kind of a fight to establish who we are and what we're about. So there were songs like Sharks and uh, and our record, I Will Become, really was about our journey, you know, becoming Christian men, you know, and our struggles along the way, a lot of, a lot of that would be, you know, the context of what we're writing about. And, and now, you know, as I think we've established who we are and what we're about, when, when we're speaking to our audience, you know, it's about obviously sharing the gospel, but it, it's to a secular audience majority of the time. So we want to make it approachable, 
down to earth at eye level and transparent. And, uh, and I think a byproduct of that is talking about mental health, you know, cause there's so many people, uh, that come to these shows that are struggling and they're hurting and music empowers them and gives them encouragement. And especially with metal, it's so, it's such a powerful sound and aggressive mm. and, and maybe angry, but it's a good anger, at least for what we're trying to do, letting out that steam. And, and I feel like those type of people just gravitate to what we're doing because we feel, you know, we feel a lot of those same feelings and mental health is such an important thing to address. Maybe it's God led us to this, but I, I think it's definitely what he would want. Mm-hmm. I think God would want us to reach people that are struggling and try and show them the value of their lives and the, and the lives of their friends and, and have some, some weight to what we're doing. Anybody that knows convictions knows the phrase aggressive worship. Yes. Tell us about what that is for people that might not understand. Sure. So aggressive worship was established before I joined the band. So I'm going to do my best. (laughs) Aggressive worship to me is physical display of worship, but with our music and we're playing aggressive music. We're worshiping. And I think a lot of times, like when we're performing, getting into the music, you know, you're headbanging, you're throwing your fists around, you're jumping, what, what have you. I try and step away from the performance side and try and look at it like worship. You know, like when you see someone at church and maybe they lift their hand or, or uh, maybe they sit quietly in their seat or maybe they jump up and down and, and run around, you know, that's in their heart worship. And so that's how I view our performance. It's aggressive worship. Every performance I've been to, I've seen you guys pray before each show out in public in front of your audience. Um, do you get comments about that, especially in the secular realm? Oh, yeah. We, we'll usually do like two. There's always one that's like behind the scenes and we try and whether it's in the van or, or backstage or what have you, we're we're coming together to address maybe a, an issue or a concern or something on our heart and uh, and just give it up to God, you know, and then. On stage, it's just kind of like that last plug in. It's like, all right, like, here we go. You know, like, like, let your spirit fall, be present. And I think that there's something bold and honest about praying, like, visibly in front of our audience. It's not that we're trying to be like, look at us. Like, it's not about that. It's just about putting aside the ego and the maybe the pride or or attitude, whatever, just putting that aside and really focusing on what we're doing and why we're doing it. And there's been comments, sure. Uh, mostly good. You know, most people are like, Hey, like if they are not about it, they're at least like, Hey, that's cool. Like I, you know, I'm not, I don't believe that, but I, I like that you guys are transparent. Like that's to me is a, a, a great compliment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, it's really not uh, common to get some serious backlash or naysayers of expressing our faith. I think mm-hmm. not to get too political here, but I, I think a lot more people are accepting of, uh, people with different backgrounds and, and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. Out Performance Shop is a proud supporter of Solid Rock Radio. They specialize in retail and wholesale of automotive, high-performance, racing, and off-road products. They also carry a variety of accessories from remote control cars to rock and roller multi-carts. On the web at outperformance.com. Backstage with Mothership returns after this. Hello, this is Lee, president and founder of Solid Rock Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in. We invite you to tune in every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, to listen to Backstage with Mothership live, so that way you get the full uh, show with all the music and to listen to the guest. And also, we play great music all week long, so check out our website, solidrockradio.org. We would love to have you as a regular listener, and uh, not only as a regular listener, but also Check out our podcast as well for uh, Backstage with Mothership, a.k.a. Cindy Blankenship. Follow her on all her socials uh, on I'm with Mothership on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much for listening. You're listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. Well, what was it like to be nominated for a Grizzly Award for the uh, Scream Vocalist of the Year? Uh, it was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> really, really cool. Yeah, I was uh and zach was uh nominated for drummer of the year yeah he was he was really excited so y'all like that. had three three nominations this year which means you're being noticed you know oh yeah yeah we were yeah. very grateful of that it's funny because uh with covid and everything we're we're working so much like with our jobs it's almost full-time for some of us and uh for me a lot of my coworkers they'll they'll mention like like oh that's the rock star dude you know he's he's in a band he's famous you know like they're 
giving me a hard time and, and joking with me. But uh, I had a few coworkers come up to me and they're like, we saw like, you know, that you were nominated for that. And like we voted and they're all oh. like really supportive and really it was really cool because a lot of those people don't even listen to, the, you know, like kind of music we make. But they're really excited at what was going on. And, and that, that made me feel really good. I think that was probably the most special thing was just getting that recognition from my peers at work and family members and, and how they all pulled together to vote. And uh, th- that was that's a win to me. <laughs> yeah, I was excited to see uh, all my friends do well and, and get recognition. So I'm like so prejudiced. <laughs> Every single person needed to win <laughs> on that <laughs> list. But I just uh, am excited to see that people are getting recognized and people are saying, hey, you know, we see you and we appreciate what you do. I mean, that's that's the big thing, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I think it was really cool. Oh, I mean, like with the the type of music we make, being that it's so specific, like it's mm-hmm. metal, but it's metal core. It's Christian. So it's Christian metal. Core. Like there's like <laughs> so many different avenues. And for this one little thing that we do to be recognized on a, a public scale, you know, that recognition, the recognition is very cool. The first time we met, I don't think I had planned on going to the concert. It was like a War of Ages. It's, it's conviction. Masquerade. Yeah, Atlanta. the Masquerade Convictions and Earth Groans, right? That's right. Yep. One of your fans said, go down and take care of my boys. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought, I, I don't really have any connections. So I think we went through Zach, and I just brought gift bags because I didn't know y'all well enough yet to, to bring food. <laughs> no, I, I, it seemed like you knew exactly what we wanted. Energy drink, fiend. I'm drinking, I'm drinking energy drink Red right Bull. now. <laughs> yeah, like you yeah Red I, I think it was the best. Yeah. <laughs> I believe oh, yeah. It was Beef Red jerky Bull. and cheez or something. There was... Like little snacks. Yeah, we were very excited. Yeah. So <laughs> what what place. other snacks do you guys like when you're out on the road? Uh, it's always changing. We we split up our drivers. So Zach and I will do the night shifts after the show. We'll we'll just hit the road and we'll we'll chat it up and we call it our podcast time. So basically, what you and I are doing right now is what we do. <laughs> we're just <laughs> talking back and forth for however long. Uh, and for him and I, the snacks are usually like. I might drink an energy drink, but it's like, how far do we need to go? I'm drinking the Black Cherry Kickstart. Zach and I are obsessed with these, too. They're so cheap, too. But oh, It's a Mountain Dew Kickstart. Yeah. If you find a pilot or loves on the road, uh, they sometimes have Kickstart on tap. And uh, <laughs> we joke around. We're like, dude, they got Kickstart on draft. Like, it's like a <laughs> bar or something. So, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of energy drinks. Uh you know, there's this beef jerky. Josh is always on some weird diet. He was doing keto forever, so it's hard to say what, what he might. I think he's doing like a vegan thing now. I, I'm not sure. Just <laughs> junk food, really. <laughs> Whatever we can get, you know. Whatever you can get. Yeah, I always find that people like fresh fruit and stuff like that that they don't normally get. Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that and like uh, <laughs> anything that feels like you're not eating pizza or cheeseburgers, because every day is just pizza, pizza, pizza. Like that's catering. Yeah, it's- man. If I'm catering for somebody, you have to force me to bring a pizza. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> refusing to bring a pizza for catering. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I would be. Yeah, I, I, we're grateful, and sometimes it does sound good. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. just pizza every day, and it's like one box to share between four hungry men. And it's men. cold. Yeah, it's after like show cold, Caesars. right? Uh, it's the worst. If anybody has anything remotely close to like a plate of dinner, like with sides <laughs> like it's so exciting and sometimes there's a few special people that'll show up on the road that'll bring like a full cooked meal and like i i don't know how they do it or you know like what it takes to go through all that but i'm sure it's a lot so anything that feels normal even if it's small is greatly appreciated <laughs> well next time you're at the masquerade hit me up and we'll do the full meal deal oh i, I wasn't i wasn't trying to fish for that i was just <laughs> no no i'll tell you we will <laughs> we don't want to trouble you <laughs> it's no trouble at all i absolutely enjoy it when I'm fixing the food for the bands, I am humming your songs while I'm doing it. <laughs> I find myself doing that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, anyway, you, I want to talk a little bit more about y'all's sound because you have all these heavy chugging breakdown. Is that like the type of music that you listen to? How much of that is part of you? It's different for everybody in the band. Like I know Zach, but he loves pop punk music. He's always listening to some Blink-182 or something. And like Josh, he's really into like, ambient pop and electronics it's so tough to call <laughs> for me yeah i do i do love metal and like i do listen to it like all the time i really like the new north lane and kingdom of giants and vale of maya i listen regularly but uh no i can't be that metal guy all the time uh right. definitely try to have some uh 
diversity with my music because I'll, I'll definitely get burnt out if I'm listening to too much metal. What do you like, listen I'll, to when you want to just chill out and just relax? Ooh. It changes. There's this really cool electronic instrumental band that probably one of my like, top five artists. They're called Tycho. You might not like it. I don't know. It sounds like it might be in a car commercial or something, but it's like <laughs> soothing. Maybe uh, it's car insurance. Tycho. <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, I, I really like that like soft electronic lo-fi hip hop music. It's the best. Mm. It's so awesome to have that in the background. Um, okay. There's a really cool retro 80s synth band called The Midnight that I really love. They're very popular. And then like just normal top 40 hits, you know, Justin Bieber, whatever. It's all it's all good to me. Hey, how do you like uh, Love and Death's cover of uh, the Justin Bieber song? Have you heard it? I haven't heard that. No, you have not heard it. My girlfriend and I go back and forth about the Love and Death because she likes Love and Death and I love Corn, And I feel like I can't do one or the other. I don't know. It's like a weird thing. I feel like it's like uh, some kind of college football rivalry or something. <laughs> You can love both of them. Check out the <laughs> Let Me Love You uh, cover, and uh, it's got Lacey Sturm in it. You two yeah, I'll, that I'll it sucker out. in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check it out. Okay. Time has flown. <laughs> Anything I have not asked you that you need to tell us, because uh, we've already talked about the new album coming out, and the people can get on shop.convictionsrock.com, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's the number one way to support us. All like right. DIY. There's no middleman. So if you want to support us, buying merch is the fastest, easiest way to do it. And it goes. There you go. And you'll get this awesome, aggressive worship music to boot. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, are you going to be seeing the guys anytime soon? I hope so. It's tough to say right now, uh, just with the pandemic still. Uh, we're all living in different states, actually. So whenever we get together, there's something big going on. So we're we're still trying to navigate. Hopefully soon. But uh, mm-hmm. we still keep in touch. Obviously, we have to. <laughs> True. Well, be sure to tell them all I said hello. I will do. And thank you again for uh, taking some time out and talking with me tonight. This is awesome. <laughs> All right, Mike. Thank you so much, and uh, hope to see you out on the road pretty soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening tonight. Stay tuned for more great music all night long. Be sure to check out my I'm With Mothership Facebook page and Solid Rock Radio's website. Follow the link under Shows to Backstage with Mothership, which will have the links to my guests' social media accounts. This show will be replayed at 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Past interviews available on podcast.solidrockradio.org iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on Pandora platforms. And remember this week, be kind to one another.